everyone. Today we are painting a snowy evergreen tree Christmas card. Now, if you're new to watercolors and you're not as confident as you would like to be with your gradient washes, this is a great one for you because this one is very forgiving. Your background doesn't have to be perfect. It'll be a great way to practice the technique, but it's just fine if it doesn't turn out perfectly. Welcome back everyone. If you're new here, my name is Teresa. I'm a surface pattern designer and watercolor artist. Okay, I am using my kneading paper and I've marked off a five by seven area because we're going to get really messy. Let me show you my practice one. So this was the first one I did. I really want my image to go across the whole card. And by having this margin over here, I can drag my brush all the way across into the margin and get a nice clean edge. If I just did it on the paper, the exact size that it's going to be, I might have some pooling happening on the edge. Alternatively, I could use just regular paper, which if you don't have a block, you might want to tape your paper down so that there is a margin, but then cut your margin off. Or it's fine to have a margin all the way around. I have just found that because we have this solid white at the bottom, then that border kind of gets lost you know between the image up here it looks great but down here it looks kind of funny so to me anyway that's just a personal preference feel free to put a border on it if you want but if you don't want to this is a really nice way of doing it if you happen to have a block pad also real quick <laughs> let me give you a little tip if you don't already know about blocks that when you start you know, using the paper, you'll end up with this glued edge and it will cause a problem if you do not peel it off. For instance, if you have this little edge all the way around, when you go to take it off the block, you're more likely to tear your paper. So always remove that little edge and you'll get a cleaner removal. Okay. So I'm going to use a one inch flat brush. Any flat brush will work. The larger, the better. Just as long as you can get good coverage on your paper. Now we want to think about, we want to leave some white down at the bottom for the snow. And if you leave a straight line, to me that looks unnatural. So I like to have just kind of a, a wavy little horizon there. So you can kind of decide how far down do you want, how big of a, a little snow area do you want. The thing that's great about this one for beginners is that it's not going to matter if your gradient is not perfect. It, it really doesn't. See, this one's not perfect and it still looks great. I'm going to use a mixture of phthalo blue, cerulean blue, and indigo. And I want the indigo really mostly up top. So I'll just take a little mixture of those. It does make a nice night sky. Let's put indigo in there. And I am going to I still had some pigment on my brush, but that's fine. I want it darker up top. And very quickly, I'm going to drag that down. And now we're starting to see more of that phthalo and cerulean. Need more water. That was a little much. And now I've gone a little far down. I didn't mean to go that far. Kind of got sidetracked with the fact that I had too much water in my brush but I'm just going to leave it. Don't overwork it. And I'm not going to worry about that little white spot because our tree is probably going to cover that up. So that is a little further down than I wanted. That's okay. So I think I got sidetracked there. I'm not sure if I said, but once you start moving down your paper, don't go back up. 
that's how it gets messed up. See how that's bleeding very nicely there. And then there's going to be a little bit of a line here because I actually grabbed more water. And that is going to cause a little bit of a bloom here. But this will be perfect because I want you to see that it's not going to matter in this instance. And while there's, it's still wet, it's not overly wet, but it is still damp. It's not dry yet. I am going to take a larger, a number 10 brush with some water in it and put some Dr. Martens, some watery Dr. Martens in my brush. And then I'm just going to add some snow. And because it's still wet, these are going to spread out and look like crystals, which I think makes a beautiful snowy background. And I want it all over, not just at the top. And our tree's going down the center right there, so we don't have to worry about that too much. And to prevent like lines occurring, you can turn your brush in different directions and just kind of tap it. And we're going back in a moment and do more snow, so let's don't overdo it. I just wanted some of those blurry crystally snowflakes for the background. And now let's let that dry. And now I am going to take my number six silver black velvet brush to do the tree. You can use any brush you want. A dagger brush is a really fun one to use because you can really twirl it around and get some really great organic shapes. But mine is a little bit too large for a five by seven card. So I, am, I don't have another one that's smaller than that. I have a larger one, but not a smaller one. So I'm going to use my number six silver brush, which will work just fine. And now I'm using straight indigo, just plain indigo. And I want it a thicker consistency, especially at the top. And so let's get the centers about right here. And we don't want it all the way to the top of the card. Let's have a little space there. So I think right about here will be good. So let's just make a few little shapes like we might see at the top of an evergreen tree. And now I'm going to start to one side and do a little bit to the side and a little bit in the center. And I'm not going to worry about this side just yet. So now I'm going to drop down a little bit and go to this side. So I want to leave a lot of space. Let's grab some more pigment. And I'm just scribbling. And now I'm going to drop down and go to this side. And just scribble. I need a little more water on that. And of course, we're going to be going further and further out. So kind of think about that. Don't let it get too wide too soon. And any stroke will work. Like I said, just scribble. And stop and take a look at it. Every once in a while. And we'll come back and fill in some spots. Right now we're just getting the basic shape. And the reason why I like to skip and do it kind of zigzag is because you don't want too much. You don't want to fill it completely in. And I have a tendency to do that. And that just prevents me from over painting this tree. You can always go back and add, but you cannot take away. 
Do we want a skinny tree or do we want a more full tree? Well, we'll just see. See how it works out. I'm keeping an eye on trying to keep this tree somewhat centered. I have a tendency to go heavy on this side and to take it further out on this side. But honestly, you cannot mess this up. That's the wonderful thing about evergreens, especially in a wintry setting. They get so burdened with snow that they get a little bit lopsided from all the snow. My husband and I used to live in Alaska and I really miss it, especially the winters because we would go um, cross country skiing at midnight, a lot of nights, I won't say most nights, but a whole lot of nights. We would go cross country skiing just right out our back door. And this card reminds me of Alaska. So now I can go back and, and kind of fill in a little bit without overdoing it. And we're going to add snow to this tree so we can fill up some of these empty spots with snow. Like I said, we don't want a solid tree. See, I'm just doing little flicks. But anyway, Alaska was so much fun and I, I really miss it. Let's make sure we can see the top of this tree. As it's drying, it's kind of getting lighter. Okay, let's let that dry and we'll do our snow. Okay, now I'm going to take full strength Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White. You could also use acrylic white or titanium permanent white, but not zinc white. As we talked about last week, zinc white will not cover it up. And we really don't want to water this down. Um, I've got it real watery over here, but this is the full strength. And now we just add it to our tree everywhere where there would be snow. And we want to be careful not to cover up our tree. So just put little touches of snow. And don't forget about branches that are facing us. It's not going to look natural if you only do branches out to the side. And so I'm going on the top of these little branches that are poking out. And again, I'm just scribbling it because it's not going to be a solid, you know, it won't cover it completely. You'll still see branches poking out. So this is a nighttime scene, one that we might have seen while we were skiing in the middle of the night, sometimes coming across moose. You always have to be very careful around moose they always have the right of way and you never want to get too close. So that was a lot of fun. We would take our little 10 pound dog with us who loved to go. We'd put him in a backpack and go skiing. And we would ski until two or three in the morning. It was just a winter wonderland. It was so great. So when we get down here to the bottom, I'm not going to put a lot of snow on those branches, maybe just a little, just because I don't want, since there's snow down here at the bottom, 
If we put a lot of snow down here, then we're not going to see our branches. So I want to leave the greenery there. Maybe just small little touches. All right, I think that looks great. Now, let's take our watery part and make more snow. So our little crystallized snow is really the background snow. But if we don't put more snow over the top of this, then it's not going to look very natural. And that small brush is making very small snowflakes. And I really want them larger, so I'm going to go back to my tin. Get a lot of water on it. And really load that brush. The larger the brush, the larger the snowflakes, and I don't have enough water, so I can just dip it in the water and then go right to this. Put as much or as little as you want. Oops, and I'm getting it all over me. <laughs> I can't remember if I said this in the beginning, but you may want to cover your tabletop. I probably should have told you that in the beginning. Ooh, I am truly getting it all over me. <laughs> so we're going to have hard snow. I'm putting lots of snow on here. Okay, as soon as that dries, then I will cut this off so we can see what it looks like. Now, see what I mean? It doesn't even matter if your gradient is not perfect because this is a snowy, wintry background and there's going to be lots of variation in this kind of a sky. I think that's beautiful. This makes a great Christmas card. Um, we could have done it on a larger paper and then folded it if you wanted a folded card, but I really like the postcard style. I can just write my Christmas message here and slip it into an envelope. And then that way the recipient, if they choose to keep it, which I hope they would, um, they can frame it and then they'll, if they frame it, they'll still have my note and my signature on the back in the frame without having to cut the card. So that's just why I like doing the postcards that way. Now, if you would like to decorate your tree, of course you can. And you can do this really before you add the snow if you want. I'm going to use gouache in this little tool just to make it quick and easy to do some little ornaments. And this is a different tree than the one we just painted. As you can see, it's another great example of how my wash was not a very smooth gradient, but it still looks great. So don't sweat your gradient wash technique. Not for this project. And I'm using gouache. You can also use acrylic. It doesn't matter. Just whatever you have on hand will be fine. And now I'll move over. And I just like, if I'm going to do small circles, this little tool is actually a, a fingernail polish tool, fingernail art. But it works really well for this. And it's, it's very fast. And I'll get lots of colors. And you could also do this with drawing paste by putting that on there before you ever do your gradient. 
but you really have to plan out where your tree is going to be if you do that first. This way we can come back after the fact. And there's all kinds of decorations that you can do. You can have garland. You could use some gold paint if you want it to be real shimmery. And now let's do a little blue. And this might show up a little better if we do it on top of the snow. So you can get very creative with whatever decorations you want to do. And I think I may, on this one, I'll put a little star up here with my gold paint so that it will be nice and shimmery. And we could even put a little gold garland on it. Now we have a nice decorated tree. So now there's one decorated and not decorated. Well, I hope you enjoyed that one and I hope you painted along with me. If you did, I would love to see your work. Please post it on Instagram using the hashtag paintingwithbela so that I can comment on it. And thank you so much for liking, watching, and subscribing to my channel. You are helping me grow so much, especially lately, and I'm just so appreciative of that. And I'm having a great time with these videos and I hope you are too. Thanks so much, and I hope to see you next week.